you know, we, we get told time and again, look, it's all very well you middle class white people mm -hmm. telling us what the problem is, mm -hmm. right? Um, you're not middle class and you're not white. Mm -hmm. um, what is the problem and how do we deal with this? Um, well, as I've said many times before, the social indicators, I don't say causes because obviously there's still an element of personal responsibility. The social indicators for violent crime among young working class street gangs have remained consistent for 200 years. Relative poverty, masculinity, exposure to domestic violence, uh, lack of education. So the solutions are fairly obvious in many ways. Glasgow, which was once dubbed the most violent city in Europe. He's not fired, this is a throwback. <laughs> And when we look at serious youth violence, which is my preferred term, if journalists want to be taken more seriously, they should use the term serious youth violence because knife crime has become a sort of racial buzzword at the moment. Glasgow has seen a dramatic reduction in serious youth violence to the point that none of the murders of teenagers that occurred in 2017 occurred in Scotland. What approaches did they take in Glasgow? They took a public health approach, they took an interagency approach, they took an approach that saw violence in a holistic way. They saw the link between domestic violence... How's it going, sweet storm? They saw the link between violence in society in general and violence in the street. Uh, they, they looked at early interventions, basically. Coming in People stay locked in. We're about to bring on Leon Old Strong. Yes, Leon, Leon, I see you, my brother. To young people's lives and families' lives as early as possible and diverting them away from crime. Good education, good jobs, counselling. That was so dramatically effective. So the fact that there's all this hand-wringing and suggestion that an entirely different set of policies should be suggested for London, maybe Birmingham and Manchester. So let me, let me put this to you. Yeah. It's very interesting, yeah. uh, your view of this. And what I would say to you is this. Statistically, it looks like in London yeah. right now, yeah. this is predominantly a problem of young black teenage boys yeah. who are members almost exclusively of gangs attacking each other. So that the perpetrators and the victims appear to be almost exclusively young black men. Do you think there is a racial element to that in terms of any cultural issues, racial issues? Or do you think it's the same problem we had in Glasgow where they were white and but actually the race... They locked in people, don't go nowhere now. Might look at the statistics and think it's a black problem when it's not. Okay, Tell so your friends, get on board this. In the country, let's just look at the facts. that have higher murder rates than London does. Clearly throughout human history, black people have not had anything remotely resembling a monopoly on violence. Yeah. Over the last few years, some of the most horrendous knife attacks, both the victims and the perpetrators, have been white and they've not been from London, including a 13-year-old girl stabbed to death in Southampton, a 16-year-old stabbed to death in... Come on, let's get people in the room now, come on! Stabbed to death in York, a 5-year-old stabbed to death by its own mother in Oxfordshire. Mm -hmm. When both the perpetrator and the victims are white, race suddenly becomes unimportant. There is one limited sense... And let me pause that right there, because you know what, at the end of the day, that is the wonderful, wonderful man known as Akala. Mr. Akala, yes. And now you're in tune with Mr. Courtney. Mr. Courtney, and you know what God said in the Genesis, amen, it's Sunday. He said, and God, hallelujah, let there ha, ha, be light, ha, 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 to all of my Christian church-going family. How you doing, everyone? This is Black Car Speakers Lounge, Courtney Winston. So that was Akala with Piers Morgan. That was published in March 18, 2019, so... Everyone's saying, yeah, yeah, Piers Morgan got cancelled. What's he doing on there? You know what I mean? That's a throwback. Don't watch it. It's a, it's a rapper, Akala. He's more than a rapper. He's an academic. He's a, rap, he's a, he's a rapademic. A, uh, he's, a, he's got a doctorate degree, if I understand as well. Rapper Akala on linking knife crime to race. Very relevant, very pertinent points being made by Mr. Akala um, on GMTV. So now, Mr. Leon Ostrong. Mr. Leon Old Strong is uh, in the building. I see him on the uh, as one of those who uh, are listening. Send in your request, Mr. Leon Old Strong. Oh, yeah, there already is this brother. My friend, yeah, good friend of mine. He's a very talented director, and he goes by the, there. He is this good-looking mo mofo here. <laughs> How you doing, King? Mr. Leon, How you doing? How you doing? All good. All good. Yeah, man. Just gonna adjust off the camera. Yeah, man. You look like you're, you look like you're, you're Bruce Wayne in the mansion with all those books behind you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just choose my background very carefully when I'm when I'm coming on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Go yeah, you see the rest of it. Three sixty. You wouldn't call me Bruce Wayne. <laughs> One hundred percent. So, bro, we're gonna keep this nice, short, and sweet. This is a question and answer session for anyone that would like to engage with us today at black car speakers lounge please don't forget to follow like and subscribe here our instagram and also our youtube 
page of Black Film Institute, which is a conglomerate of filmmakers, writers, entertainers coming together as one union, one union. So Leon Ostrong, I'm, I'm proud to say he's a member of that. Big up, Darren, I see you and everyone else that is listening. So there's a film that Leon recently has made. He's made many films. He's a documentary maker, filmmaker, and there's a film currently that we're plugging. It's called Virtually There, short film. It's on this page, our Instagram Black Car Speakers Lounge page. Watch this short film trailer. Please, please watch it. We'll show it, but watch it. It's a virtual reality short film. And I'm proud to say I was involved in this. Leon, tell us more about that, please. Um, okay. What, do you want to hear background, how the idea came? Or yeah, give, a, let, give us the background, the whole story, the, 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 why you're using all of that stuff. And please, people, this is your time. If you want to jump in and ask a question, the platform is yours. We can have at least two more people on there. No trolls. Um, <laughs> all right the background um i recognize a, a few of the names that have appeared at the bottom um so as some of you may know my younger brother was stabbed back in 2017 stabbed seven times he was fortunate enough to survive and um i made a short documentary about that um i used to be a teacher some of the young people that i've taught have gone on to either carry a knife or be stabbed themselves. Mm -hmm. um, many, many young people growing up in the area, I'm from Lucian. And right. then one day I had a conversation in a barbershop. I'd gone to the barbershop basically because I was really wound up with another guy. Okay. I was really, really wound up. And um, mm. I removed myself from the situation because okay. I didn't feel I, I could keep myself calm. So I left. Right. And I went to the barbershop. You know, you know, we'd go barbershop and just have a chat and just reason. And so there was an, an older gentleman happened to be there just waiting for his mm -hmm. haircut. And he, mm -hmm. he was a litter who was getting ready to retire. Right. He, he said how he represented many young men who had committed serious acts of violence. And every single one of them had said that they wished they could take it back. So this was years ago. This was years before, you know, I was 24 or something when this happened. And it came back to me when I was thinking, like, what could I do? And I thought, if I could create something where they could experience what it's like to do it without actually doing it, uh, but not just that, to go further and to see the impact, the, fur the further impact. Because when, when my brother was stabbed, so we buried my, my nan five days later after my brother was stabbed. Mm -hmm. And so, if you can imagine the, the pain that the family was already in, and then this happened on top, and I thought, how, how could we communicate, mm -hmm. you know, the pain, the, 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 the wider consequences of this, of stabbing someone? Yeah. Because that, the most that they will see, if they go to court, they might see the victim, if they survive, the victim's family, and later on, if, you know, if they go through um, restorative justice, they might come face to face with a victim or the family, something like that. But they they don't get to see inside the back of the ambulance, inside the hospital. You know, they don't get to see the family when they're when they're given the news. Mm. I, I wanted to show that. So if you think, I mean, I know certainly me personally, I've been sent some things on on WhatsApp. One of the reasons mm. I got rid of WhatsApp, where you're seeing young people getting stabbed and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I know, young people they're desensi they desensitized to that because and often the fact is someone gets stabbed and everyone pulls out their phone so just to create a film as in a, a regular film if you like that that wasn't enough so at mo at the moment the closest we can get we're not quite total recall stage yet is to use virtual reality yep. so decided to go for virtual reality hence the film is called virtually there yes virtually there when, once you put the headset on. Come and, on. Uh, and that's the headset these as demonstrated in the trailer, which I'm gonna show in a, in momentarily, you get people you, you you are immersed in the experience of not jumping in ahead of you, brother, in terms of what you're saying. 
No, oh, well, actually, yeah. you've seen it. You've seen it. So maybe you, you should, you, you know what it's like. You've experienced no, it. No, don't try. <laughs> no, no, because I, I, I've, almost, I've watched it so many times. To me, it's like, you know, like a, it's almost like a magic trick once you've seen it a couple of times. Yeah. So, really so people, I've watched it and I, you, you put on the glasses and you're literally there. You are looking from different POVs, which is different points of views, which is the terminology they use in films. So you are the person that is perpetrating the crime and also 360 is flipped around where you're also the person that the crime has been perpetrated upon. And literally, you've got these goggles on and you can turn your... Yeah, I'm sure everybody has, unless you're really old. Everyone's had this experience, virtual reality. Even back in the 80s, there was a movie called Lone Mall Man. Chocadero, stand up my Chocadero people. In the 90s, when we used to go Chocadero, we used to play these virtual reality games. Come on, I'm not the only one now. Bumper cars, chirps and gal, street fighter, <laughs> and these virtual reality goggles, which have been around for years. But now you can use it. People are using it for film. And what Leon has done, so geniusly done, he's made, he wants to create empathy. So for those who may have the thought in mind to commit any violence, then at least, I want to choose the right word. This is a prevention before cure. That's how I'd, I'd word it. It's a prevention before cure. It's not entertainment, but it's entertainment because film is entertainment, but there's a serious message in uh, Leon's short film, as he always does with all of his projects. So you put these goggles on, you can turn your head left, right, you can see everything, everybody. And you're, so the ambulance scene, I'm not going to spoil it. Uh, this police cell scene, you, you're immersed into the emotion of the parents, which I, I had the honor of playing. Uh, you, the person that is perpetrating the crime and the one where the crime is being perpetrated upon, the police, you get the POV of the police. A lot of people, I know a lot of people don't like police, but trust me, the good police that are out there, they have to see things like this on a daily. And I want to just say this, just because now we're coming off lockdown somewhat, it doesn't mean knife crime took a break. Just because we're coming off lockdown doesn't mean violence took a break. So anyway, look, let's see... Uh, Leon's trailer. Leon, stay there. I want everyone to look at this and please jump in with your questions in the comment section or you can jump in on the live with me. Don't worry. We don't bite. We're all good. As long as you ain't got, you're not a troll, we don't have to bring up the virtual troll back to back you off. So you're good with us. <laughs> so everybody, please watch this trailer. It's on the Black Film Institute uh, YouTube channel as well, but I want you to see it for the first time if you ain't seen it so bear with me as we flip the camera around and we just lock off the light them for a second all right okay i'm dark skin and pretty again <laughs> okay here we go so check this out this is virtually there directed by yours truly leon Ostrom. <laughs> Who that? Who that? Who that? Who that? So then I'm gonna put I'm gonna pull it up again, play, and I just want you to explain to us what's happening, just briefly, sir. All right. So the the purpose of this trailer was to communicate the fact that the film is an immersive experience for because most people are 99.9% .9 of people are not going to be watching this on a, on a virtual reality device so to communicate the, the immersive nature of it on a standard flat screen um, yeah well, I don't know I, I mean I hope I hope that comes across yes sir so basically that's the reaction of anyone that puts on their goggles. They literally feel like they're dead. So question, Leon, when, so this is in a prison cell, obviously. 
Yeah. I mean, the technology, how did you manage to cover everything and hide the cameraman? I know, but this is just for the, the audience. Virtually there. Virtually there. Leon Trump. How did you manage to do that, bro? Well, in terms of hiding the cameraman, it was literally like playing hide and seek. We all had to just go and hide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember that. I remember well, that. that part with the police cell, each of us is hiding in a different cell. Yeah. Um, right. You know, and then that's it, really. You just got to hide. <laughs> you just got to hide. And I, will, I also know that the Metropolitan Police, or members of the Metropolitan Police Service, or force, excuse me, service now? They're service, yeah. They um, also helped in putting it together or contributed, I should say, obviously, because obviously to get a police cell, you need to have consent for uh, a filmmaker to use. So explain the technology. I don't want to be asking all the questions here, people. There's a I question here. One question here. Okay, go ahead. Um, what do you think an effective method would be to reduce knife crime from a victim's family point of view? Well, you know, <laughs> I mean, you put me on the spot by playing a video of a caller beforehand. Like, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not in the caller, but I think to to speak about reducing knife crime is to speak about treating the symptom rather than to treat the problem. And to treat the problem, we've you know we've got a that's a society wide issue, and um, it goes to it's it's got it goes to things as giving the young people things to do, not not criminalizing young people being out on the street, giving bringing putting putting money and investment back into you know the youth said where are all the youth clubs now? Because I know the youth club up the road from me big. But it's not, it's not in use, mm. you know. Um, mm. Given opportunities for because if you think young young people have a lot a lot of energy, they have a lot of um, questions, internal questions, internal dialogue, and mm. all that energy needs to be channeled. And without without guidance, without some output for it, you know. And you and you've got people that are growing up in in poverty. You've got with gentrification, you've got the, the divide between the haves and the have-nots is a lot more defined now because you live on top of each other now. If you think us, if you, you look at the way Lucian looks now, for example, mm. and this is what people in Lucian that are in social housing that don't have a lot of money and haven't been a teacher. Mm. You know, I've, I've worked in one school where most of the children are on three school meals. And then I've worked, and this is, this is not even an exaggeration, a school on the other side of the road, where all the children's parents are pretty much homeowners and they're all bringing packed lunch every day. You know, they've, they've, they've all got a different pair of, of footwear for every change in weather condition. You know, and for, for, mm. of course they see each other. Of course mm -hmm. they see each other. Um, representation on TV, because I mean, I, I had mm. to, um, I had to take a knife off a young man. Um, but wow. And he said to me, this is what it's like living on the block. Mm. In Broccoli, by the way, yeah? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I took him outside and I said, show me the block. Now, you know, Broccoli like, like Shoreditch now. So <laughs> I said, there is no block. The block is in here. Come on. So there's, there's, a, there's a lot of things to change, which... You know, it's it's a knock. Uh, right, I'm, I'm losing my, my, my flow here, but but say for example, if I if I'm working if I'm working on an edit, and somebody doesn't understand the edit, ask me to change one small thing, say at the beginning, mm -hmm. that has a knock-on effect. Mm -hmm. where it causes me to have to do a lot more work on the rest mm -hmm. of the project to say it right mm -hmm. from this one change. It's the ripple effect, isn't it? So if we go back and you change things like education and opportunities, minimum wage. Yeah, yeah. Um, provide jobs for people. It will have mm. a knock-on effect because a lot of these, a lot of these, you know, drugs is a big, a big factor in in yep. youth violence. Yep. Young people seeing their parents struggle and then being offered a chance to make some money, some good right. money. Um, I think, I think the media has a massive, I'm, massive, massive part to play. I'm just going to thank you, bro. As a filmmaker, writer, producer, director. Mm. Filmmaker, writer, producer, director, and father. And by the way, yes, 
Our guest today's name is Leon Ostrong. I don't believe his surname is Ostrong. I believe it's Leon Oluwafemi Ulo uh, of the uh, Yoruba tribe. That's not his real surname. His name is Oluwafemi. Ah. You're right, but one part. I'm not Yoruba. I'm a Rubu. Respect, bruv. Respect, respect, respect. Big up all of my Europe. Did you say um, um, um. No, sir. I'm Jamaican, bruv. Sorry. Ubu, Ubu. You are huh? H-E-O. Ubu. Ubu. Okay. Yeah, big up, big up, big up. <laughs> I've got to get back to my African roots, and I'm still on there. Going to find out what my DNA is and where exactly from West Africa I'm from. So, yeah, our guest name is Leon Oldstrong, sister. And, yeah, you, you, you make a point regarding media. Actors. I've done roles... In Top Boy, I've done roles in gangster films, British gangster films. Do you feel that, especially as black actors, filmmakers even, that even more now, even more so, we have a responsibility, a social responsibility, and for those footballers out there and those with money, social responsibility to change the image of our media. Do you yeah. think we're actually, as Chadwick Boseman said on The Breakfast Club before he passed away, we need to stop being racist to ourselves, because it's like I've seen, I've heard arguments about well, we shouldn't be taking roles, or that's the only role we got. But what is our responsibility? See, I don't. I think it's two things. I'm not sure it's fair to put uh, so much responsibility on on the individual, but at the mm. same time, as they say the ocean is made up of single drops of water. So if each individual was more responsible, then we wouldn't have these, these, these issues. But you, you got to consider that for black people, there's no other ethnic group that has the amount of time, energy and resources put into keeping them down. Right? Mm, that's no, no, no other group are subjected to that. And I mean, what we achieve given that is phenomenal. So imagine if, imagine if we, if the lid was moved, right? If yes. the lid was moved, what we do now, because any space that we enter, we make an impact. Any space that we enter, we make an impact, right? And you don't have to hold back someone who is mm. less than you, because they can never catch you. If you give them all the same opportunity, uh, um, investment, whatever, networking, they can never catch you if they're beneath you. So why, why do we need to be held back if we are beneath, you know? So um, I think, I don't think so much, I wouldn't put so much, uh, I'd go a bit easier on, on the actors, let's say. I'd, I'd put more, right. I'd focus more on the, the content creators, mm. you know, the content creators. And I think, um, I read somewhere once, it said that Netflix has like an algorithm that, yeah, for for the black people, for, and I guess it, it is looking at the more the black content you're consuming, mm. it throws up a still of of any show film that contains a black character, mm -hmm. even if it's not a, a you know a black narrative. Um, there's a lot of I think I think we're misled sometimes by something just because someone has a black lead it doesn't mean it's a black narrative. Uh, an example, exactly. the mind be Luther. Like okay. Luther to me is like a white show which just has a black main character. Um, another one, um, Save Me, Save Me by um, what's his name, Lenny James. Uh, yes, 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 Lenny James, the great Lenny James, yeah, Save me, which is a, is a brilliant story, but it's still it, it's a white show which features a black, black main character, mm. you, you know. And mm. I mean, for that. Mm. I don't know. I don't know the full ins and outs of it. But I watched it and I thought this is a brilliant story and he's a brilliant actor. But he also wrote it, and I, I, I don't know how much power he had. But I thought, why did you make it so white? It's mm. set in South London, featuring a black man who grew up in South London. Why is it so white? When you say white, what do you mean? All right. So in it, I don't know if anyone else has seen it, but in it, he, he um, he's. I mean, it, it, I guess it, it's mainly set in this estate where he grew up here and he's, yeah. his character turns 50 in the show. So let's say he's been on that estate 50 years. And there's a pub, that the local that they always go in and he's okay. always... 
Yeah, yeah he's pretty much you the mean only black character wise, in there. Culture. Huh? You mean culture, culture wise? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's not, there's no, there's no really of other black characters in in it. I know. You watch it and you can you can see Deptford and you can see all these places in it and I thought, how would you have gone? That's a good. That's a point. Very serious point you made because I was having this conversation some time ago about what is black culture. What is black culture? What does it mean to be black? What is black identity? And I think black people, this might be a general sweeping statement, but I'll say it nonetheless. Black people are still very confused about what is black culture. Anyway, before I get on to my point, the people come first. There's a question here. And now it actually preempted. I was going to actually ask the same question. Production company, oh, okay, it's a point. The production company was behind it and it and funded it. Yeah. Yeah, no I doubt, mean, no doubt, no doubt they did. But I also think the fact that he wrote it, I just imagined on a production like that, like I don't imagine he has as much power on The Walking Dead as he would have had on this thing, which is set in London, that he wrote. I might be wrong, you know, I might be wrong, but I'm just just as an observer who doesn't yeah. have the opportunity to ask the question, and as a black person, I'm I'm Having grown up watching and consuming content, yeah. white content, yeah. and considering that normal, mm -hmm. at this point in my life, I consciously flip it. So the majority right. of content I watch now is black. Yeah, oh, no, and black yeah. Sorry so, for interjecting, bro. Sorry for interjecting. Yeah. So we're virtually there. Yeah. And everyone we're with Leon, Leon Old Strong, who's made countless other short films, documentaries. He is a filmmaker, director. We're virtually there. When is it coming out? And what's f f most important? What? Where did you acquire the funding from? How much did it cost to do the short film, which uses technology where everybody has to view it with these uh, virtual reality glasses? Well, I'm not. I'm not at liberty to disclose a lot of that. But what, what I will say. Go on, is, tell us. No, go, 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 go. Given the fact that it's, it's a three sixty film, it weren't cheap. <laughs> It wasn't <laughs> cheap at all. It was not cheap at all. Everything, everything cost a bit more and took a bit longer because it was 360. You know, it was like, you, know, wait, it was like, you yeah. can't cut to another shot. It's like, it's like theatre. You just got, you got to just go through it one take. If we get that bit wrong, the whole shot is done and you got to start again. So that meant for every shot, I had to buy that many more outfits. Because if you imagine scenes with blood, once the shot is cut, we got to get a whole fresh outfit up. Yeah. So yes, we, sir. Yeah, it, was, um, it wasn't cheap. And I so guess this, what I would say is, sorry, man, so the, the funding was a result of, it was a, a sequence of events which started with the film, of the documentary about my brother, which then led to Fair mm. Trade. So I just saw Carlu joined us. Big up, Carlu. Carlu was Come one of the members in Fair Trade. Um, Big up, Carlu. Put me in the room to present the idea that I had for virtually there. And, um, you know, just, just, I think it's just, just being able to, to be sure of your idea for, for funders. I'm, I'm preempting a certain question about funding, but with funding, I've found that usually low, people got good ideas, man. There's good ideas all over the place. But mm. the, if I'm going to give you my money, I want to feel comfortable giving you my money that, you know, and feel comfortable comfortable that you can deliver something that makes me sure like yeah that that was well spent money well spent Excellent. so yeah. so where when can people and where i should say now how where can we see this uh when when can we see virtually there well the the, the thing with virtually there that the biggest i guess the biggest uh plus uh, the biggest pro, I guess, of the of the the project is also the biggest con, because it, it it's dependent on the technology to view it. So, um, you can watch it like on like a mobile mobile phone or, or tablet or such, um, and you you can hold it and like look, you know, move it. Oh, around. I see. Yeah, yeah. So you can, so we said you can get the phone, and you can watch it and view yeah. it. Yeah. Or just by moving but it, you just... not to do that because, like, at least not the first time you see it because it's so different when you watch it with the headset on, with the headphones on. Like, I'll give you, I'll give you, a, I don't know, it, it wasn't funny at the time, but when I was going through one of the drafts, now remember, 
I wrote it. I was there when we filmed it. And I watched the thing, I don't know how many times. I went to lean on the wall inside the thing. A wall that wasn't there in real life. And you remember Del Boy in, in Only Fools and Horses when he dropped? When he goes to me? I dropped so hard. I dropped so hard and I jumped up quick to look around and said, I took off the headset mm -hmm. to make sure I don't it. <laughs> so in other words, for safety, people need to be somewhere safe and comfortable when they're they viewing the goggles and all that kind of stuff. But what I will say okay. is I'm currently trying, so it's only, um, there was there was a um, question, can I scroll up, um, who is it? Uh, and Antonika Simone, have I said that right? Sorry if I said it wrong. Um, how long did it take to complete the production? Um, it took a lot longer than it otherwise would because of COVID. We we finished filming the week before we went into the first lockdown. Yeah, yeah. And again, given that, you know, you, you, can ed you can edit this without using the headset, but to watch it back, you need to put the headset on because if you're editing mm -hmm. on a standard screen and there's a problem with the shot back there, you're going to miss that. And there's a, prob there's a potential to, to see, to have a problem with the shot behind you, to the side of you, above you, all throughout the film. So... It took a long time because we couldn't sit and edit together, which we usually, you know, the team would sit in together on the edit and things that weren't working, you know, I could just say, actually, no, I'll do that, do that. But we're doing it across, um, you know, we're doing it virtually, um, online, where, where a lot of us are stressed. So it, it took a lot more cuts than it otherwise would have. And, um, oh, sorry, Gary, the GWA Hall, he just said, must be seen with a headset, as I said. Right, yeah. Gary. Um, it, yeah. So we've we finished filming in March last year. I think we I wrapped up the final cut uh, December. Okay. And it's only now that I've been able, because of COVID, been able to take it out. So I've got a big set of headsets that I've been able to take it out and do group group um, demos. I'm currently in the process of trying to organise some sort of screening where people can. So I, I, I I'm trying to get a venue where I can do like one hour slots one hour slot so people would have to book one o'clock mm. two o'clock o'clock which okay. would give me time to um view it put them on recharge and we got we got to sanitize them because of covid and that so if anyone's interested in that i'm trying to find the venue which um, and i'm trying to find it somewhere that's either close to a train station or has a car park nearby or on the street parking but yeah we're, we're, bro you know what i'd even do you know what? I, I, I'll even do a viewing at my yard, bro. Yeah, <laughs> I swear. I'll do a viewing at my yard, like chairs, everything, everyone can, you know what I mean? Not any, anybody, but yeah, that's just, you know. Someone's got a question. And when that happens, what happens you, can, you can poke. We lost you there for a second. I think we just got a problem with the connection, people. Keep still, Leon. What I'm telling you. Yeah, so we're just going to get it. We're with Leon Ostrong today. Uh, just a little bit of connectivity going on. I'm sure my man is still there. Just a little bit of connectivity. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. So, okay. So what's the question? Good to have you back, Leon. I know we had a little moment. There's a few more, couple more questions there. Yo, people, don't be afraid. Don't be scared. If you want to come and join in, just send your request. Let me check this. So let, there's some other questions going on here. Some other questions going on there. I may know a venue. Can you hear me, Leon? I can hear you. I can hear you. So I'm just, I can, I may know a venue. Um, yeah, Antonika, thank you. Yeah, DM me. Um. Also, schools, schools. We'd like to get these into academies, into schools. So any of you who are teachers or have any parents who have uh, connections in school, <laughs> I think this would be very good. What, were you seeing yeah, something? Yeah. No, no, Dilo Spud, that's my cousin, and I'm skin and teeth. <laughs> all right, all right. It's giving my head skin and teeth. Um, so, uh, is that, is the, Denise, are you asking how to spell my surname? Is that, is that me you're asking for? I think Denise asked the question what other films have you got on YouTube? What other films? Um, What's on there? I guess the the best thing so that the, is to go to yeah, my website. Yeah, yeah, go to my website, which is um, leonoldstrong.com. So my name is the same. I don't, 
does my Instagram appear on it? Um, if I add it on the post, Leon, I'll say that. Will people see that? Leon Old Strong. I still believe your surname is yeah. Femi. That's my name, Denise. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Leon Woo! Proud of those African names. Gotta be proud of the motherland names. So it's Leon Armstrong. What's your yeah. what's your website, bro? I'm gonna type up in the comment section. Yeah, I just put it in there, you see it? Leonardstrong.com. Oh, yeah, oh, okay, so you done it. Go to the project page and you'll see um yeah, everything's there. Awesome, brother. I I I I um you know just because me and Leon are friends. Leon still auditioned me. <laughs> I still had to turn up to the audition process. Yeah? And I still had to read lines, go through the process, whatnot. So, yeah. And I'm thankful that I got a part on this because, man, I'm involved in this acting thing because I want to help raise the level of consciousness. That's what I'm all about. That's why I got involved into this, into spoken word, into the arts, because I believe it's the best way you can inform and engage people, man. I think it's the best way. The arts has always been the, rena the, uh, the renaissance period is testimony to that. You know, uh, under Chairman Mao, there was a cultural revolution. And, you know, it's always the arts that will inform people and engage. And I believe arts is the perfect way to engage young people. I spoke to young people in the school this week and I said, you're me, you can't control what the news says about you. I mean, because this week, last week, there's a, there a stabbing in Brent, Brent Cross Shopping Centre, 21-year-old. There's also the, um, a few other stabbings that have been reported on the news. It always seems to be black youth that are uh, are making the headlines when it comes to stabbing. And it's not black youth doing it alone. It's not you know black what I'm about that. Sorry, sorry to cut you. Go um, on. Go ahead. Day today, Sunday. Friday, I was in Essex giving a demo of virtually there to some uh, members of the local authority. And they were just talking about stabbing after stabbing after stabbing. And um, a, a few of them, so I only showed it to the adults, there were no young people there, were were troubled, had to go outside for a cigarette after watching because one of the young people they'd worked with had just been stabbed and killed the week before. Oh, man. And they said to me, these are not black boys that are doing this. Say that again. Right? These are not black boys that they're talking about, yeah? These are white boys mm -hmm. that are stabbing each other. And as you know, this, this is, uh, this is Basildon. This is just up the road. You know, we're not talking about Glasgow or Liverpool. This is Basildon just up the road. So it, it's not, as they like to make out, it's not a black thing. You know, because you know the, the majority, the vast majority of young black people are not out here behaving in this way. But the media keep showing it and showing it and showing it. And you, you know, why are they doing the that? It is because it's, it's, the same, it's the same reason they, they used to show, if you go back to the original birth of a nation when they were trying to portray the, 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 the black predator, they want. They got to keep. They, they want to keep us looking like okay. that. They want to keep Birth of a Nation, the first Hollywood film produced in America. Birth of a Nation, where they held the Ku Klux Klan as the heroes. Mm. Yeah, Birth of not the Nat Turner, not the Nat Turner, Nat, not the Nate Parker version of Birth, Birth of a Nation, <coughs> which was produced by the actor director Nate Parker, who was talking about the story of Nat Turner who was the uh, black revolutionist who fought against the slave master who's a free freedom fighter. But Birth of a Nation that was produced, uh, memory serves me well, in, in the early 19th... 19, uh, sorry, 1917 <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And people, it was applauded by the, 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 the president then. Was it Roosevelt? I'm going to do my research, people. He applauded that film. It was even given an Oscar. It was a book first. Now I'm remembering. Birth of Nation was it doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't just keep people outside of the community afraid of us. Yeah. It keeps us afraid of us. Come on. Which keeps us divided, you know, because if, if, if we unite, I could say right now in this divided state, this state that is, is this handicapped state, and I say handicapped yeah. as if we've been held yeah. back, um, look what we're achieving. Because yeah, yeah. The, the influence that black people have on popular culture uh -huh. 
is hugely disproportionate. Come on. Small number of us influence, you know, because even, even, you know, because you, you can leave, go way up north and you'll hear, you'll hear people say, wah, wah. Mm, that's right. The, the youth culture is one culture. Asian, black, white, everybody says Wagwan. Everybody. That it is what it is. At birth of a nation, war drama, three hours and 30 minutes long. Yes. Still on IMDb. Not counseled. And I want everybody to take note. Birth of a nation, a racist film, is not counseled. It's not being pulled from IMDb. Birth of a nation produced or released in 1915 which was one year after the First World War, First World War, 1914. And in that movie, black people were hunted. The, the story is, is that a, a, a black, a white actor, blackface, must remember there was no black people acting in Hollywood then, white actor in blackface, supposedly playing a black man, story is, rapes or kills a white woman, and then no, the she, she leaps to her death. She leaps to her death yeah, rather, than, to her death. rather than be um, violated by the black man. She leaps to her death. It was written by or directed by W. D. W. Griffin's controversial Civil War epic, when the Confederate Colonel Ben Cameron is captured in battle. Nurse Elise Stoneman petitions for his pardon, reconstruction of era South Carolina. Cameron founds the Ku Klux Klan, which was found in that area when I've been to North, well, North Carolina. Um, Ku Klux Klan battling Elsie's congressman's father, African American progeny Silas. Mm. 50 to 100 million box office it, it, it made. So that time. I, I love that. A, big, a big brother. <laughs> and it's got five stone rotten tomatoes. So. There's another thing I want to talk about this council culture review because there's this big thing going on around about no o'clock. And what's it, what's it, what's it? Before we get into that, sorry, I just want to Go say we, we've got Brother Andrew here. Brother Andrew, yo! Still, Brother hasn't, still hasn't watched it. I'm still still waiting to, to meet up with you, Andrew, for you to watch it because you are Andrew, watching jump, it. Jump, on, the, jump on the live, Andrew. You might be busy. Andrew, you, you can watch. send a request, jump on the live. That's my big brother right there, man. Come on, mm. brother. Papa G, a.k.a. The Investigator, a.k.a. Muhammad, a.k.a. He'll, he'll find a needle in a haystack, a.k.a. Master of Breaking Down Movies from an analytical mind perspective, a.k.a. He been doing that for years before there was a YouTube. Check out Andrew, The Investigator, man. Every week, he has an educational platform where he speaks to we, the public, about film, and he uses film or, or investigates films and goes into the original intention of the producers, directors, screenwriters. Not coming from his own mind, but coming from the very film directors themselves. He done something on Color Purple uh, a couple of weeks ago that was magnificent. And he broke down the movie, what it meant. Why is it that every uh, in that movie, Color Purple, there are there are no positive black men in that film. None, 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 none. And that harmed the image of black men. And also, it inserted into the minds of women, black women in particular, that black men ain't no good. You ain't no good. You know, which we know is a lie. There's many good black men out here, many good men, many good women. And then we have to get rid of that divide and uh, conquer gender role that is going on right now. So big up, Andrew, the investigator. Papa G, go ahead. Sorry, I had to do that. I've known him since I was a teenager. He's responsible for you know, my consciousness. All right, so what, what were we saying? Council culture. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> oh, you were, you, you'd ask me a question. I'll cut you, man. No, no. So, yeah, council culture, all these things going on. And last week, we said outright, we don't stand with no, anyone that harasses, sexually abuses, or abuses their part. We don't stand with it. We condemn that in the highest order. But now we're looking at this whole thing, this allegation, and Noel Clark's award was pulled from him. Television programs being pulled from uh, uh, on TV. And you know what? It's all based on an allegation. And I believe, as it says in the Human Rights Article Six, that everyone is guilty until proven 
excuse me, everyone is innocent. Everyone is innocent until proven guilty because anyone can be accused of anything. And rightfully so, if you've done harm, especially to women and children, you should be punished 100%. But I don't, I personally believe that we, let's investigate it before we punish. And today we live in a day of council culture. I'm, I'm just using Noel Clark as, a, as an example. I'm not saying that I, you know, that basically I'm not saying to anyone out here that, yo, I support Noel Clark or I'm against Noel Clark. I am for the facts and we must judge on facts. That's what I'm for. That's what we're saying at Black Car Speakers Lounge. So this whole council culture, which now is controlled by the people or those who run the media, I mean, what do you think about it? What can we, I mean, what's the solution behind that? How I mean, council, the, council the, culture, the black male image, the black male image. I mean, council culture as a general issue, yeah, this, I'm, not, I'm not speaking on Noel Clark right here. Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, people make mistakes, right? People, I'm, again, let me emphasize for anyone jumped down my throat, I'm not talking about anyone abusing women or exactly. anything like that. About counseling someone because they said this or they said that. Uh, people make mistakes. Everyone has said and likely will say in the future things that might have been out of character that they later thought better of, that they wish they could take back. In a lot of cases, I think we should be, you know, we need to allow those mistakes unless, unless each of us is, considers ourselves without fault. Right? Mm -hmm. um, I also, I'm also for free speech and genuinely free speech. I'm not, well, I think a lot of people that are for, I say a lot, but I, this is an assumption and based on people that I've come across, you're not for free speech. You want freedom of speech for the things you're in agreement with. Mm -hmm. right? Free speech has got to mean it's got to mean free speech for all. So I'll give an example. There was a, a YouTuber who I don't know his name, and he had um, some racist views, and he ended up getting sent to jail. Wow! Now I don't think he should have been sent to jail. He's saying he's saying what he's saying. If I mean for me, if you don't like it, don't tune into his channel. Why are you on? Mm -hmm. I don't. You know, it's like watching a video and you see comments, negative comments that. I, the most I do is hit like I don't even I don't I don't I ain't got time to, to write anything. But if I don't like it, if I don't like it, yeah. I see the time to sit there, and, you know. So people got to be allowed to make mistakes, and like these, these for the most it's, it's celebrities we're trying to counsel, right? That we're trying to counsel. I'm thinking we don't we don't know these people. I don't I don't I don't even care enough about celebrities. I care I care about the, the real people in my life, you know to to counsel or not counsel, if they're talking nonsense, I mean, you can make your own personal decision to mm. invest your time, money, whatever in them or not. I'm mm -hmm. not, I'm not going to turn each other. And when people, when people do it as well, it's usually a trend. They're jumping on as a trend because everyone mm -hmm. else is doing it. You know, the same thing with Black Lives Matter. Everyone jumped on as a trend. <laughs> do, it, mm. do, it, do it on your own when you ain't got the, safe, the, the safety of the crowd. If, it, if you're really that serious, not just Black Lives Matter, whatever. And if I'm that serious about an individual, me, me one, I can't counsel him. I just, I'm just going to tune up. I'm just not interested in that person. When it comes to more serious things, like, like Noel Clark, I, I don't know what he did or didn't do. And I don't, I don't know anything about him as a person. But like you said, it's, it's innocent until proven gu guilty. And as far as I'm aware, there's been no due process. Mm. Which, if we're gonna, if he's, if his award has been stripped and his shows have been cancelled, what that says is that someone can make an allegation against you, and then that's it. It's curtains for you. Now, it, I know there was there was it was a, a few women that have come forward, mm. but numbers don't make for truth. Yeah, numbers don't make for truth, and that that's it. Because then anyone could, you know, could uh, um, collude against you. Mm. For, Whatever reasons conspire against you for whatever reasons and again i have no way of knowing or not knowing the way we find that out is due process yes sir and as far as I, as far as i'm aware that hasn't happened and so, the victims also need to be dealt with as well and when i say dealt with i mean looked after you know and also new laws rules need to be in place so that foremost 
because men get abused as well. Foremost, the women and, and people forgetting, children, children mm. need to be protected in the environment of the entertainment. There yeah, is no, no rules and regulations to protect women and children. So it doesn't happen. So we can protect women and children. You yeah, know what I mean? That's what I'd like to see. Go ahead. I mean, for me personally, if I was, if I'm doing a casting, I'm not going to be asking a woman to get naked anyway. And if if I did for for some reason need that from for my own protection, one, I'm not going to be alone in the room. <laughs> exactly. I'm not going to be alone in the room, you know. But if if he's guilty, right? If he's guilty, like I say, I, I'm responding to sweatstorm, yeah, image sensitivity issues. I I I don't I don't see the need to see or know who these women are. I'm just saying there should be an investigation. Yes, I don't, right. I don't, I'm aware that's not happening. I don't follow celebrity culture enough to know. But if he's done it, then he, de he deserves the, the due punishment for it. Of course he does. Yeah, I don't. I don't think anyone's going to argue with that. I just don't see that happening. So I'm just. I'm just very suspicious of the timing. Like, like what if if Bafta knew beforehand? Oh boy. Yeah. I don't, I don't, that doesn't make sense to me. If Rafter knew beforehand, which it seemed pretty clear that it did, why did you go ahead with it? And, and dude, you know what? I have to say this. It's a very strong point you made. There's so many name brand celebrity, not just actors, so many people that have done stuff that are still eating and they still got a career. You know, they still are collecting awards. They're still having their shows out there. Still haven't been stripped of their awards. And, haven't been yeah. stripped of nothing. MBE, OBE, CBE, BB, whatever. And so, I think didn't 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 Adam Deacon, you know, did raise a lot of these issues back when? As I think yeah. he did. Um, yes, yeah, sir. That's right. He, he raised the issue of harassment and bullying. He just got, he got pushed aside. Mm. So I think we, it's also maybe it's a case of who who is making the allegation because I I know as when I was a teacher, as a black male in a majority white female uh, environment, listen, any wow. any time any time one of the white females' feelings were hurt, which would usually be we've had some sort of interaction. They, when it's a disagreement, <laughs> I would always see see the feelings of superiority manifest, yes. and then we have that discussion, Perfect. Which, Perfect. which you no longer feel superior. So when when your when when your argument doesn't stand, yeah, you have to try, you have to try a, a new a new tactic, which is the emotion. Then you start you play the damsel in distress, and then immediately, you're the I'm not crack. I'm yeah. Crack. yeah, you you bring on the tears, and you know the danger of white tears now. Yeah, I'm I'm immediately wrong. I'm immediately it doesn't matter what the fact the facts have gone out the window. It's just the fact that this this lady has cried. Yeah, and they're looking. You're looking to 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 sack me. You know, you're looking to put, put things on my record just because this one person said he did this. One person. And that happened to me many times, many times, many times. Yeah, I've been through that, bro, you know, in life, you know, where, you know, you're, you're trying to have a conversation with an individual and because you're challenging. I mean, recently... <laughs> Oh, I never got I'm, nothing like no club. I'm not no, 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 nothing like no club at all. This is just a oh, yeah. general conversation <laughs> with me and a female, and nothing, no, no way. And uh, just because I asked the question, which challenged an opinion, rather than answer the question or say you don't know the answer, I was my voice. I'm being attacked because my voice was deep. Oh, why are you raising your? I, I was not raising my voice. Oh, you don't have to use that tone of voice. Well, I, I can't apologize. I've got testosterone. I'm a masculine male. You know, I can't apologize for that. I'm asking you a question. Sometimes when you challenge people's ideas or what the hell their beliefs, we get triggered, man. We get triggered and we get emotional. Male and female, black and white. But in, in a many a cases, you're right, there has been a case of, <laughs> I mean, black males have been, been the victims of people's force, force. And I'm not saying those ladies that have accused a uh, 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 no club, their uh, allegation. I'm not saying that they're, they're false. I'm not saying that. We don't know. But there has been times where allegations have been put, put on a man and then, rah, you, you mash up just due to an allegation. We need proof of claim so that justice is served on both sides. And that's, 
I spent, I, I share the same opinions. You lastly, bro, and I know I know the answer to this. The attack on the black male image. You feel that there's an attack on the black male image, not necessarily from white people, but even from our own kind, so to speak. Well, I mean, even in media, from my own kind, is still a result of white people. It's always all white supremacy. That if you trace it back, it all goes back to white supremacy, because, like, if you, I mean, if you listen, like. It, it's within like hip hop, drill music, whatever. When you hear black artists talking about harming other black people, yeah, and they're not they're not talking about harming the people who are at the root of our problems. They're talking about harming other people who are suffering the same things as them. And this is because we've been shown that our lives don't have value. We've shown that in many ways. We've shown that in the other artists that the, the you know the, the artists coming up are trying to emulate the artists that have come before them who are trying to emulate the, the artists that have, that have come before them we see with the, the repeated mistreatment and murder of black people at the hands of police at the hands of white vigilantes mm -hmm. we don't <clears throat> we don't know our, our, our history we don't know what black culture is most of the problem black black culture is not eating jerk chicken, listening to reggae, rap music, whatever, yeah? Because, you know, I'll see, I'll see certain times, right, you'll see a white person, for the most part, usually a white female that I'll see, who will be dancing, have a Jamaica bandana around her leg or whatever, and she's eating rice and peas, and suddenly she's accepted as black, right? Like, I'm not saying, like, like you know what I mean? was You're wearing the, a carnival costume last year. Yeah down with us and for me to be down with us is to stand with us and to to use your position in society to fight the things that are holding us back that's what down with us is yeah and you don't need to eat rice and peas and jerk chicken to, to do that so, or jollof rice or jollof rice yeah, yeah. so we we don't know what black culture is really because what what we perceive as black culture is for the most part all of us not you know black black popular culture and black popular yeah. culture is not controlled by us that image for the most part is not controlled by us it's a white controlled image in the, right. the mainstream media because we're also the media this is the media right now what we're That's doing right, bro. We're also our own media so the attack always goes goes back it always goes back always goes back mm -hmm. to, to white supremacy now, without knowing our, our, our history, do you think if I didn't, I didn't hear, right, become aware of Malcolm X till I was about 15, 15 years old. I've never heard of Malcolm X. The mm -hmm. first time I heard of Rosa Parks was uh, the Outcast song, Rosa Parks. Yeah, and I, I think I was about 19 when I heard that. Never, never didn't know anything about any kind of black history. Mm -hmm. I, didn't know that I didn't see on the TV, on the four channels that we had back then, right? So for, the, for these, these young black people, without, without someone showing you, because there, there are many things that we take for granted because something's easy for you. You know, for example, if you're, if you're a naturally athletic kid and you know how to climb a tree, but your friend is not so, you say, come on, just climb up the tree. It's mm. not easy for them, yeah? So things that are easy for some of us, I want to find something out. I just go and read a book. Mm. Not for many people. I'd say that the, the block, the block is in your mind. In the mind. The block, that, that mentality stops you from going, I want to find out, go and read the book. You know, you need, you need to be given permission to do, to do things. You need to, you need to see, you need to see yourself. You need to see black people reading books. You need to see like One, one of the, the powerful things I think about virtually there is forget the film itself is for kids to be sat in a room and heard, hear that the filmmaker's coming in and then see someone like me walking. Mm -hmm. uh, right. You know, and I'm just like them. Where are you from? I'm from Lucian. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> this is this. I'm just like you. Mm. All, all, all of it, all of it. Um, you know what? When I, when, I, <laughs> when, I feel, when I feel emotional about what I'm talking about, I start to lose my train of thought. But yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think that the, there's a, an attack on the black masculinity that comes from within. I think the where it's really smart is that it it looks like it's an attack on black masculinity from black people, but it's not. 
Yeah. Interesting. Very, very nice saying that. <laughs> <laughs> I've got no tea left. Yeah. Well, brother, you know what, bro? I'm involved in your film and I can't wait until it comes out. We're in the cinema, question and answer session. We know lockdown is being eased off. Oh, according to the government, oh, we can hug people soon. It, 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 we're going to be able to hug people soon. So, uh, That's yeah, great. I haven't, I haven't hugged in. anybody for the last year. Exactly. I've been hugging people now. I, listen, I don't stop hugging people. Yeah, the right people, that is. Consented hugs. It's always been that, the case that way. <laughs> Exactly. Got to be yeah. careful. Got to be careful. See, if I missed any questions on here or anything, because uh, I forget that I have to scroll. Or if yeah, anyone yeah. try me. Yeah. So no, no, definitely. My attention, just uh, DM me. I don't get so many DMs that I won't see yours. Where can so. we find you? Yeah, all right, so we've got your website. You're on the Instagram, Leon, Leon Oldstrong. Femi, Leon Oldstrong. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and um, yeah, your handles, all your handles, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. All right, I'm gonna send it as all as a comment now, yeah. Go ahead. Anyone Go ahead. that might have missed it, yeah, I'll you're send also, it. You're also like you're you're a filmmaker and director for hire as well. So, like people that want to do content, music videos, short films. This man is not just a man that will just get their camera and pull it up. He's looking at deals. He's a real cinematographer, director. You know what I'm saying? That's where the word cinema comes from. Cinematography. You know. So um, it's brilliant. I love working with you, Leon, man. Seriously, bruv. Love it, because you always bring out the best in I, man, you know, in myself. So any yeah. other questions for Leon before he goes? Because we're not trying to do... We're trying to keep these things as brief as we can. Don't forget to follow and like to subscribe to this page and to our Black Film Institute YouTube page as well, where you can see... Oh, you know, know I will coming. post as well. The, the website, we're virtually there. If anyone wants to <laughs> go and look at the trailer properly. Uh, sorry. Virtually dead trailer. Oops. No, that's yeah, I'm jealous of your, your bald head, you know, bruv. I'm kind of jealous of your bald head, you know. I need to kind of, oh. like, put that there and put the beard in, you know. Rock it's that the, it's, it's the only option I've got. If I let it grow, I end up looking like Friar Tuck. Like, you know, one of them monks. You know. <laughs> Friar Tuck, you know, bruv. So, bro, any other projects that you're working on? What, what's, ne what's next? Oh, apart from that. Oh, from my, my next project is... Um, Currently in post production, we're nearly finished actually. It's a documentary that um, we were crowdfunding for. Um, we got, we, there was a, a lot of support in the crowdfunding, and then later we were lucky enough to get support from um, BFI via Doc Society. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And it was originally called Eight Minutes and 46 Seconds, which was, it was just a working thing. Which was a bit too, too too on the nose for me that name, and then Sky Sky went and teased the name anyway. And the film is now called uh, Weathering. The film's called We I can't say my th's yet. Yeah? We Weathering. 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 Yeah. As, so it is. Weathering. weathering is a term that was obviously like weathering, like when when uh, something is weathered, like eroded. And oh no, I swear, so we didn't miss it. No, no, it's a documentary. There's no auditions. It's a documentary, documentary. The, the next drama is coming soon. Don't, don't worry. The auditions, the auditions. We put a couple of auditions on this page. But um, it it refers to the way in which like a surface will be weathered by the weather, worn down. The same happens to a black person's body. To the wow. to the it's weathered by the constant racism. But it's a, it, it's a double mm. meaning. It, it also refers to the way in which black people endure the racism. We weather it. We weather the storm. So the film is called Weathering. It's a 30-minute documentary, and it follows two... It, it's the story of racism during the pandemic, Pandemic, yeah? It's not, it's not babe. You said the right word. You said it, you said it right. I heard you I'm say not... pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> it's... Um... <laughs> Specifically, anti blackness during the pandemic, and it's told told through the story of two black key workers. One, a um, oh yeah, inclusion manager, a secondary school, and the other, a, a COVID nurse. And it's told through their stories. Um, 
the trailer for that is yeah on my um on my instagram somewhere you, you won't have to scroll too far i don't post much on there but it, it, it look for eight minutes 46 seconds don't look for weathering because yeah. it's not cool. tag black car speakers lounge we'll post it on the page as well my bro yeah yeah all right we'll do that, that was sent to me directly i'll just post that up on all the different social medias and ting and ting so mm -hmm. Leon, I'd love to stay and talk with you more. We're trying to keep these things as brief and as sweet as possible. You know what I mean? Sweet as a gnat. So, brother, I see you with beer books behind you, man. Yeah, I love that. I love that, man. A man with books. You know he's onto something, man. You know, I just, I've said it, I've said it, I've said it when we, were, when we did the Black Car Speakers Lounge live, the panel. Yeah, last year. Wow. Jeez. I know sure you're trying to keep it down, but my I don't actually watch that many films these days. My inspiration comes from from the books. Come on, it comes Come from on. from the book, and in, in terms on. of visualizing, I Come read a I read a lot of comic books. I read a Thank hell of a lot of comic books. I visualize things pretty clearly in my head. So, um, yeah, books are the key. I don't think I don't think anything I'm saying that anyone on here doesn't know already, man. We got we got a certain. Exactly. Certain type of audience that I think you, they they all know the thing. Bam, absolutely, brother. I have to big you up one time and big up everyone that's joined us. Everyone, please follow Leon Old Strong on all of his social medias, mate. I can't wait to see virtually there again. And like I said, there's people, anyone that has schools, academies, any educational establishments or institutions, holler at Leon Old Strong. Yes, it is shocking. And it is something you're immersed. You, you actually feel like you're there. You've got the headphones on, the actual goggles on. You're actually in there. And if this will help us prevent knife crime and violence in our community, in all communities, mate, let's do it. Come on. Let's do it. Let's take filmmaking on another level. And that's what Leon Ostrong is doing right here, man. It's virtually there. And so many other projects as well. That Leo You are the Spike Lee, the Tyler Perry, I know you don't want to do the material thing, but you are the Spike Lee and the Tyler Perry the of the UK, the my bro. You're the actor. You'll be doing the Madeira thing. Uh, uh, <laughs> anyway, we're going to get ready. <laughs> I don't think I'll be make a good Madeira. I don't think I'll make a good Madeira, bro. <laughs> I don't know. I think you would. I've seen your legs. <laughs> You've been watching, bro. Don't even think. <laughs> I don't know about them toes, though, man. I don't know about them yeah, toes. Yeah, that's <laughs> what this qualifies me, bro. Yeah, that's what disqualifies me, man. I don't think... I'll leave that to Tyler Perry. He does a fantastic job at doing that, man. Big up Tyler Perry, man. Love Tyler Perry for what he's doing. But more so love you, brother, because I know you and I see your work, brother. And it's just a pleasure, man. Always having you on this platform, bro. Yeah, man. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. And, um, thank you, yeah, guys. Thank you, thank you for everyone who tuned in. Thank you for taking time on a Sunday evening to listen to me, right? Um, yeah. Don't go yet, guys. I'm going to change something real quick, but yeah, but definitely. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead, Leon. Uh, that's it. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for thank the you, support. Brother. Thank you for your time. Thank you for everything. Thank you, Courtney. Yeah. Yeah, man. Black Film Institute member Leon Ostrong right here. Thank you, my brother. Bless up. And I'll catch you up in a bit, Leon, yeah? I'm going to yeah. just stay on and just close off the show. Thank yeah, you, sir. Please. Love, bro. And, bro, congratulations on the newborn. <laughs> yeah. Baby yeah. boy, right? Baby boy, yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Flexing the muscles, yeah, man. We've got another Leon O Strong in the house. Yes. <laughs> Bring up yourself and the family. Yeah, love to you all the time, brother. Yeah. Thank you. Nice, bro, bro. Take care, buddy. Yeah. See you, bro. Cheers, man. Thank you. So, people, that was Leon O Strong, filmmaker. Go and check him out. Check out, oh, man, this film, short film called Virtually There is awesome. Anyway, I'm not going to keep you long. Please follow, like, and subscribe to Black Film Institute. Black Film Institute, YouTube. You see a host of other videos, films, short films, and interviews right there and on this page right here, Instagram. And on YouTube, if you're watching this on YouTube as well. Yeah, follow, like, and subscribe. Want to get them likes up. This book, I'm recommending this book, people. I know it's a bit back to front. It's called Word Magic by Pal Chang. Word Magic by Pal Chang. And I'm telling you, words, words are powerful. What you speak can come into existence. What you speak can come into existence. Get this on Amazon, seven pounds, man. It goes into the, to the meaning of words. For example, one word, 
When you look at the word, word itself, W-O-R-D, word is synonymous with the word world, W-O-R-L-D. When you take L out of world, you got word. In this book, it teaches you that words and vibrations, just like sacred, ge sacred geometry, words are vibr vibrations. So we pray, we meditate, vibrations. So for this week, going into this week, coming in, speak what you want. Speak your intentions into existence because your word creates your world. No coincidence, word and world are very similar. Your words create your world. I'm going to close on that. And trust me, word magic. Don't worry, people in the church. This ain't no judge, no obia, no voodoo. Don't be scared. Yeah, because even in your Bible, it says, in the beginning was the word, and the word dwelled amongst men and became flesh. Book of John, chapter 1, verse 1, I believe. So don't worry. Words are powerful. Be careful what you say over yourself. If you feel down, say you're up. If you feel sickly, speak of yourself and say you're well. If you feel that you're going through a financial difficulty, speak to your pocket, speak to your wallet, speak to your debit cards and say that you are wealthy. Words carry vibration. It's no coincidence they call money currency. Currency is synonymous with energy and electricity. So everything, real money is your vibration and what you put out there, people. Trust me, this book goes into it, you know. It goes into it. It talks about... Oh, man, listen, listen. It goes into the definition of where words come from. Even lang... Oh, God. Even the alphabet. Why is it called alphabet? These are two words put together called alpha. Alpha is masculine. Bet is feminine. Why? Because alpha is the first. Doesn't mean men are better. I'm not saying that. Alpha and bet. Better. Better... Beta, we use that term for beta. People use the term called beta male in re relationship cultures use that term. Well, the word beta, beta means to be feminine. And this is why the word beth or beta, beth means womb and house. It means womb and a house or a place. Yeah, the mother, the womb, where everything starts. That's why we have to put respect on women's name. So this is why Jesus was born where in Beth. Beth, the womb, Beth Lehem. It's a, a Hebrew word. Beth Lehem, which means a womb. Yeah? And this is why you've got places in London, in East London, called Beth No Green. Hey, listen, Alpha Beth, meaning you can't have no words, you can't have nothing without the male and female energy. Alpha Beth, Beth, Beta, womb. Yeah? Oh, man, don't, I know, some of you, I've lost some of you now. Some, but basically, the words we say are powerful. Know the meaning of every word. Get this book, I recommend it highly. Amazon, Amazon needs to sponsor up the thing. What you say, Jeff? Billionaire, sponsor up the thing. Truly, I think. So anyway, follow, like, and subscribe. Courtney Winston, as always, be here next week, Sunday. Eid Mabak, Ramadan Mabak, to all Muslims who are breaking fast, taking place this week. Don't go crazy on the food. Take your time. <laughs> Fasting is great, man, for all, regardless of your religion. It's very good. Take care. Virtually there by Leon O. Strong, Black Car Speakers Lounge. Check out our page. You can see the trailer there. Take care. Peace and love. And remember, you, you are the star of your own movie called Life. You can determine what goes in the script of your own movie called Life as God, as the big, big, big producer and director. Take it. See ya.